Yeah, but I've been put on this earth to suffer. I'm a guitar man. <laughs> Starting the second hour. About two minutes. Two minutes. We have some other musicians who are here. I, I don't know what's going to happen, but. guys to stick around.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to Tom's Guitar Show. I'm Tom. They call me Guitar Tom because I'm often seen with the guitar and they call me on the phone and they ask me. They say, hey man, what's your show about anyway? I said, well, it's about an hour. About, about an hour long. It's about guitars, guitar players, guitar things, all things guitaristic. So normally I ask you to call in if you want, but this is the live show from Uptown Bill's Coffee House. So if you're out there in TV land, and it's actually Tuesday, shortly after 6, then you're watching this show live. You can actually come down to Uptown Bill's Coffee House, which is on the corner of South Dubuque Street and Lafayette, down by the tracks, and witness the event in person. Um, if you're watching Friday night, um, this is a rerun, and uh, it's over. So. <laughs> So anyway, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen in this show because the plan has changed several times. And, uh, but I'm here with a guitar and I can always sit here and play guitar, so I'm going to do that for a while. Um, also, I'm asking for people's opinions. Um, should I wear my hat down like this or flip it like this? I really don't know. I think I look silly like this. I mean, really silly. With, with the overalls, maybe, yeah. <laughs> with the overalls, yeah. A little more Gomer-like. Yeah. Is, is it the Goober? Was that the guy who worked it? Yeah, okay. Uh, is this way, I, this is the way uh, Brad Pitt wears it, apparently. And uh, this way, I think uh, this is more graphic tops. But more uh, Sinatra. More Sinatra? Okay. I, I don't know. I just don't. Definitely sell Sinatra overalls. Sinatra. Bob says we never see Sinatra, in, seldom see Sinatra in overalls. But, uh, I am wearing my, uh, my ceremonial, uh, my traditional Iowa garb. This is what people from Iowa are supposed to look like. I mean, if you live on the coast, this is what you think people from Iowa do look like. There are chickens in the front yard, we've got hogs out back. Refrigerator in the front porch. That's Missouri, though. Isn't it? No, engine, engine bar, uh, wrecked cars, okay. uh, parted out cars in the front Still yard. Cars. Well, I'm gonna see if I can play something with this. Um, I've acquired a new looper, it's a um, TC Electronics Ditto. It's a very small looper. And I, uh, I hope someday to have all my little pedals and things be really, really small because I don't like to carry things with me, so.
you anyway. You seem to have a little trouble with tuning right now. There's this, there's this joke I tell every now and then. It's like, it was, I think it was from like about 1820. I think it was Carcassi was playing a concert. And he had those alternate tunings for his guitar. It was in a salon or a salon in Paris. And the, uh, he got this review in the paper and somebody said that, uh, that it's one of the advantages to uh, retuning your guitar constantly is that you don't have to know as many songs. So. That joke is like 200 years old. Okay. There's another joke that's like 500 years old. It says, as a lutenist, it's a lute, you know, which is like the guitar, but that gut strings. As a lutenist, I spend half of my life tuning my lute, and the other half of my life playing my lute out of tune. That's a 500-year-old joke. half of the show trying to tune this one, and then the second half trying to tune this one. <laughs> Actually, there are a lot of banjo player jokes, and, and uh, just so I tell you that, I mean, a lot of them are, though, we told this joke here at least a couple of times about, you know, what did the banjo player get in his IQ test? Barbecue sauce. But um, that's one kind of banjo joke, and the, but there's other whole genre of banjo jokes where they uh, are trying to get the thing out in tune, you know. So there's one like a, like a banjo player is playing a concert. That's a joke right there. <laughs> but, okay, so the banjo player is playing a concert, and then he, a uh, uh, little boy, uh, during the intermission, the little boy runs up on stage and he turns one of the pegs, you know, tuning keys on the banjo. And the guy, uh, banjo player, catches the little kid and says, okay, listen, you're not in trouble, just tell me, tell me, which one did you turn? <laughs> There's another one long narrative joke, and I forget it. I gotta, I gotta try to find it again. It's like about some guy who spends a, shows up like four hours before the show and starts tuning his banjo and <laughs> tuning during the show and an intermission and everything like that. And, and there's some punchline to it. But punchline basically is he never got in tune. So.
Thank you, thank you. Well, uh, so Bob, you have something for us here. Pick Bob up to the microphone and, and uh, go do a reading for us. Um, we're a couple of joke tellers short. Now, I was expecting somebody to come and tell some jokes, but I haven't seen her. And so if anybody knows a joke would, uh, that they like to tell on Tom's Tar Show, that's okay. But uh, was one, uh, one thing is important. This is a family program, so... Uh, didn't, didn't bring any jokes this week. Okay, well, I'll see that one. one see that one, another joke teller in short. So. <laughs> anyway, anyway, keep it clean. It's family short. If anybody wants to tell a joke, let me know. Okay, go ahead. So, take away. Yesterday was Memorial Day. Uh -huh. So I pulled out a poem. This is Flanders is an area in Europe. At one time it was a country. It's part of Belgium and France now. Big battle in World War I. Yeah. Big American cemetery there now. Yeah. And it was written by John McRae in 1915. In Flanders fields where poppies blow beneath the crosses row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks are still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, fell down, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours and to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep till poppies grow in Flanders fields. Yeah. Very good. Man. <coughs> I uh, hope I want to be too controversial, but uh, I've never really been in favor of war, personally. And uh, my father was in World War II, and he. Uh, he didn't talk about it for 50 years. And then he, uh, about 1995, he started to get in touch with his old buddies, or they started, uh, the uh, Trailblazers, his division. Uh, so they have, a, they, they, they keep a track of each other on the internet, and they have uh, meetups, and there's always a few, not quite so many, every year. There were before. I've had the uh, honor of playing music in one of their events, actually a couple of events. But some of these guys are still kind of bothered by things. They didn't talk about it for a long time because that was the way it was in those days. But some of their experiences. My father was in the Battle of the Bulge, which was an unusually cold winter in Europe. Of course, the army and their wisdom trained him for in the swamps in Georgia to fight in the Pacific. And then after they got done with his uh, hot weather swamp fighting, they put him on a, a ship for France. And uh, so, in the cold winter. That's how it goes. Organ, uh, because they really can't tune it themselves. They need a you know a technician to come in and work on it. That they they become Buddhists a lot of them because uh, they accept you know what is is and you accept it as it is. You know. I, uh, I'm always trying to get my guitar in tune, but. Uh, Chew my little knob over here. Okay, ready? Am I okay? <laughs> ready, band? Sorry. <laughs> people, I, I've been introducing people, like people who take lessons from me to, to looping, live looping, because I was really dead against it. I thought this was uh, sacrilege back in the day, you know, when I first became aware of it in the late 80s, I think it was, maybe early 90s, I don't know. But uh, anyway, so uh, uh, because in, in the old days, I, I, I always wanted to play an acoustic guitar in a really good live room for a very quiet audience. And uh, then, you know, reality, I, I'm a little random. I, I play guitar where people are uh, eating and uh, drinking and talking and stuff. So, um, so, but more and more people are using the looper because the looper I have now, the, the uh, TC Electronics Ditto, 
little gray box. It doesn't have any memory uh, beyond, I mean, once you stop, you can't, you can't save things on it, like some of them. Some of them you can like download backing tracks. And it's just like karaoke, you know? And this is, I, I just played that and I was playing back. When I push the button and hold it down for two seconds or a second and a half, I guess, then it's gone forever. So I just did that. So if I, if I play a little like, a, say 16 bars of uh, blues and solo on top of it, that's the 16 bars I just played. Not that, you know, I brought it from home or I hired somebody else to play it for me. If anybody else wants me to play 16 bars of blues behind them, uh, you know, I, I could, I got a payment coming up and, uh, anyway, okay. I'm not supposed to do that, am I? That's against the rules of PAT. Okay, I was kidding. All right, all right. Buckle my shoe.
Thank you. So Craig, you have a you have a little something for us, don't you? Um, yes, I do. I also thought of a, a joke. Oh, good. That we need to share it. Oh, it's, 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 um, so this, yeah, no, it's, it's okay. It's fine. It's yeah. Guitar show worthy. Okay. Yeah. Well, it is. Um, so it is something I wrote on Twitter, <laughs> and my Twitter is usually R-rated, but of course I would not bring anything <laughs> R-rated to this show. But anyway, um, so this is something I tweeted uh, recently, uh, and it goes in the uh, category of the uh, religious person that walks into a bar. Hmm. So if a rabbi walks into a bar and orders a tea, does that make him a rabbit? No. Nah. <laughs> Sorry, it's not very funny. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a groaner than a laugh. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> Well, the essay I'm uh, reading today is called, uh, This is the Best Essay Ever. And something I've been working on. Um, when it comes to superlatives, people seem to have a never-ending supply. It seems like I've heard more of these in recent years, like worst customer service, greatest invention, a presidential crisis worse than Watergate. But the blue ribbon phrase I seem to hear, and, uh, hear more than any other is, best ever. Language and phrases, like many cultural features, are given to fashion, fad, and popularity. But I think evaluating something as the best ever reveals something more about us. Most of the time, the best ever phrase is used in jest, like t telling your dental hygienist, that was the best teeth cleaning ever. But I feel it shows a belief someone can objectively judge something in historical and worldwide context. The acceleration of available information makes this seem more possible than in the past. People declaring a grande burrito the best ever often don't consider all the data, but may be under the illusion that they have. Well, I've had burritos at Pancheros and Chipotle, so I should know. Everyone carries their own personal history and bias when judging. Sometimes a few opinion leaders can drive group preferences. Let's say the guy in the food channel yells and swears at a restaurant chef's, then endorses it as the best ever place to eat venison. Some people would think, hey, we should go to that doe a deer restaurant. <laughs> Exercising true objectivity with full information is almost impossible for any individual. Often the best ever label is applied to items preferred according to individual tastes and preferences, food, literature, songs, movies, fashion, etc. A sampling of Google searches reveals the following have been slapped with the best ever label. Bloopers, jokes, love songs, pictures, movies, books, meatloaf recipe, uh, my personal favorite, a best ever Christmas pageant. A close approximation to best ever is declaring something the greatest of all time. This seems to infiltrate our culture, feeding many top ten lists greatest professors, movies, actors, rock bands, drummers, and guitarists. <laughs> oh, boy. I rarely hear the tag so far applied to these lists. For example, the 10 greatest theoretical physicists of all time so far. There's a photo on the web of a car with the best teacher ever handwritten on the car's window. I wonder if the teacher would declare the person responsible the best student ever? Probably not. To make these far-reaching declarations of superiority more realistic, I suggest using the phrase, the best I've experienced so far, instead of best ever. The ever part of the phrase suggests that this declaration of supremacy stretches into the future beyond our lifetime and into a vast, unknown universe where an essay greater than this one may exist. <laughs> That's very good. I knew you, any player who uh, declared my uh, my cat was the best cat ever. But anyway, he was. Uh, I guess he doesn't know that many cats. But you have something for us, young Tom. I am. I am just coming up to tell you that uh, La Fin is here, uh -huh. and we don't think we can uh, get their instruments on. But would you like to talk to them? Yeah, sure. I'd like to talk to them. Uh, I don't think we can slip that in without uh, unduly disrupting the Oh, it's fine. The, the, the flow is, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm just making it up as we go along here. It's not, uh, we, uh, we make plans and, uh, Well, let me get you a couple of chairs and we'll, uh,
send them up to you. Okay, I'll do the uh, Papo's Weasels, isn't that the musical chair oh, yeah. song? That... I've written down their full name for you. Oh, Le Fin. La Fin Absolute du Monde. Absolute du Monde. Yes, du monde. the absolute end of the world. Right? C'est vrai. All right, let me Je get them a couple of chairs. J'ai parlé français toute ma vie. You don't mind if I do that while you're playing? Non plus. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a joke, though. I was just a, a trucker joke. This is, this is a classic. This is a, I, I like to collect old jokes. It's much less expensive than uh, collecting like old mandolins and banjos, which some people do. Uh, so OK, so these three bikers go into the truck stop. Three, well, you know, I'm not sorry, not bicyclists, but you know, hardly riding bikers. And uh, <laughs> there's a trucker sitting there having his, his trucker special. So the, one of them just puts out a cigarette in the trucker's mashed potatoes. The other one spills his coffee all over the place and it's laughing and everything. The third one just kicks a chair out from under him. The trucker doesn't even make eye, to con eye contact. He stands up very calmly, pays his bill, and walks out. And they're all laughing about it. The bikers are all laughing, saying, hey, he's not much of a man, is he? The biker says, uh, the, the, the guy behind the counter says, no, he ain't much of a driver either. I just seen him back over three motorcycles. <laughs> I like that joke. That was a joke of the stuff. It's a vintage joke. That's, um, anyway, well, I'm going to play some uh, guitar and wait for something to happen.
So you two are la fin absolue du monde. Yes. Uh, we should get that mic. We should, uh, Tom, why don't you give them that mic before they can pass it around or something? Yeah, they'll probably hear you anyway through that sure. mic. Sure, and, and mm -hmm. remember, this is, this is the duo that you and I have actually been to the town where they live, El Cerrito. El Cerrito. I have been to El Cerrito. Oh, oh yeah. awesome. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah. I used to live in the Bay Area. Oh, really? Yeah, sure, back in the old days. Yeah. I hold it. Okay. I'll hold it. Then. You could say something and do it. I don't know. Yes, we are from the Bay Area, and uh, this is our second time in Iowa City, actually at Uptown Bills. So. Okay. Oh. I, you know, I, I've been asking this question all the show. I mean, I, should I wear the hat? Uh, this is off the subject of your band. But should I wear it up like this? Hey. Okay. Or should I wear it down like this? I like that. I like, oh, you, you like down. Down. Down, is yeah, yeah, down is better. Down is better. Because I was thinking you, you would know. Because, I mean, <laughs> no, the hat, you know? don't ask me any fashion <laughs> questions. I'm not the fashion guy. I'm the guy that gets dressed by his wife. <laughs> That's not true. Yes, it is. Huh, okay. That is very true. Well, <laughs> my wife thinks I should have it up like this. Really? No, no, no. Maybe That's you shouldn't not. listen to yours. I have this theory that she's, nope. she's afraid that women might become attracted to me. Okay, okay I'll, I'll just, uh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, yeah, so you're touring the country, or is that the... Uh, the world. The world, really? Where you? Uh, where all you been? No, I'm oh. just kidding. Uh, well, no, no, world. actually, we were in Europe. We were in the UK. Um, I should look at the camera. February, where should I look? We, we don't know where they're, 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 they're... We don't have an intercom. They're, they're downstairs switching the switching. So. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> This is live TV, so be careful what you say. There's no delay. Or, okay. <laughs> Oh, we'll, 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 we'll not curse. Keep it clean. It's a family show. Okay, okay. Okay. We're not we're not big cursers. Yeah. Now. Uh, <laughs> Yet. <laughs> get a few sodas in us. <laughs> we, we were in the UK. Uh, we left uh, February 26th. We stayed there for seven weeks doing shows from uh, London to Scotland, uh, Wales. Uh, then we came home for six days. Hmm. And... We had an issue with a booking agent out there in the UK, so we had to come home a little earlier than we wanted to. Yeah. So we had to fly back to California and we told our booking agent, well, we can't start the tour off in New York, so we're gonna need some shows on the way. And he was like, well, Omaha's on the way, right? So he... <laughs> <laughs> it's on the way. <laughs> if you guys know California geography, it's like almost 2,000 miles from yeah, yeah. So our first show was in Omaha on April 27th. And then we've been going strong ever since then. Where'd you play in Omaha, just out of curiosity? The Side Door Lounge. Okay. Uh, yeah. And we'll be back in Omaha. What's today? I think on the 5th we'll be back. 4th. Fourth. Fourth. The 4th Fourth. of June we'll be back in Omaha. Different venue. Yeah, yeah, next week. Oh. We're, we're getting ready to wrap things up. We're tired of sleeping in our car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. I'll have you know, most of the times I go to California, I've, I've driven. Oh, wow. From here. No, it's, yeah, so it's a long... Or the Greyhound. For fun? <laughs> I actually took the Greyhound... Uh, I got some great Greyhound stories for you. I took the Greyhound from uh, Oakland to Lafayette, Louisiana, ah, because yeah. I worked on oil rigs uh, for a short time, and that was the worst uh, trip of my life. <laughs> 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 By far. That was a horrible, horrible ride. I see. Well, I... I could, I, I could understand. I, I, could, I, I went back and forth so many times between San Francisco and Iowa City back in the old days, and this is a long time ago. That, uh, right, that's still a horrible grade. That's two and a half days yes. on the bus. But, uh, there's a lot of nothing. Well, yeah, it's, I think Wyoming is quite dramatic, you know, the, the landscape in Wyoming. And, and, of course, you got the salt flats in Utah. That's interesting. Nebraska's. Uh, you you make the drive sound great. We're gonna bring you with us just because when we're on the drive, it's a very different conversation. You need to have a geologist along. Or something. Yeah. Not that I'm a geologist, but. I, uh, but you made it Wyoming sound like a just a glorious land of fun. Because when we drive to Wyoming, it's like, oh God, how much more Rush Limbaugh is gonna be on the radio? Oh, no, don't don't listen, listen to the FM. radio. <laughs> don't listen to the radio. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I travel. I, I generally carry a bunch of guitars, and I, I, you know, my stories would be like what the airlines do to my guitars. Um. Mm. I have a story, a terrible stories, and they, they're like personal friends, and I, you know, <laughs> yeah, you don't want, you know, you don't want them to. Here they are sitting in the business class like this, and you're, you can see through that little bit of window that they give you somebody tossing your guitar in a conveyor belt. Because, oh. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, that when we were going to to the UK, um, it was it was rough. 
Mm. It was rough. Uh, the, luckily, on the flight over, they let me bring my guitar on the plane. Yeah, yeah. Which was kind of nice because I have a soft case yeah. and a hard case. No, I didn't bring that guitar. I just brought my hard case guitar. But still, not. It's not a flight flight case, so it's yeah. not like road ready flight. Where right. It's like metal, steel reinforced. So. Yeah. Seeing them take it and they throw it, you're just like, oh, dude, are you gonna pay me if you break this? Right. <laughs> so last time I was in France with a guitar, I was like, took it in a bag because, and I took a guitar that I could afford to lose in a bag, mm. and and you know I left my good ones at home. We can't and afford to lose anything right now. No, <laughs> no. not at all. Yeah, getting rich here at Uptown Bills. Like <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> If you need anybody wants to see the story to illustrate it, you search YouTube for United Breaks Guitars. United Breaks Guitars is a very famous video. It went quite viral, the guy. Really? Yeah, they broke the guy's guitar, and then they said, you know, I'm going to sue you, and they said, good luck with that. So he made a, vi a video, and millions of people watched it, and United wanted to... Oh, Taylor gave him two new guitars. Oh, really? And then, uh, and then, he, uh, and then the airline tried to get him to take it down, and he said, good luck with that. <laughs> <coughs> so... I'll have to look it up. Yeah, yeah no, I was I was really nervous. I'm loosening the tension on the strings. I was, it was a very long flight. Yeah, well, it is, yeah. But I like to look out the window there too. When you go to Europe, you know, you look out because you go up over Canada and the Arctic, you know. Oh, he's no, I'm terrible. totally afraid of flying. So yeah. I'm oh. looking, uh, looking out the window for for my savior at that point to make sure he's guiding the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see that movie? You know, with the, the gremlin or something. It was a Twilight Zone. Oh, yeah. yeah. And William Shatner. No, I you should show that on the plane. <laughs> no, because if they did that for people like me, I'd never get on them. William and, Shatner was it? Yep, the Twilight Zone Shatter episode. The original. John Lithgow did it. Oh, they did the movie okay. in the yeah. Six. Really? Okay. Yeah, they, they made the movie of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take that. <laughs> Much of the Amtrak they had that. They show, they, the movie they were showing was Throw Mama from the Train. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd prefer to travel on the surface. I, I don't have any fear of flying except what they do to my guitars. And I, I can tell you, you know, when you're landing in New York there and you got to be in a show the next day, and there's a, and then you see your guitar come around the baggage thing and there's tape all around the case. That can't be good. <laughs> <laughs> my, my fear of them screwing my stuff up, I, I uh, gaff taped my, my case shut. And yeah. I, was, I was totally paranoid that they were going to break my stuff. I was pretty sure that something was going to come up either missing or broken. So, yeah, I did. I, I took every precaution I could possibly take. Right. And then just crossed my fingers at the end of the day. And you was see, like, it's eh. paranoid, but paranoia is just heightened awareness. <laughs> <laughs> just because you're paranoid doesn't mean the IRS gets you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So you're going to play here in a little while. So everybody, uh, everybody watching on, on live TV, if this is Tuesday, you guys are going to be playing here as soon as I'm done in a few minutes, aren't you? Is that the deal? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So this is le, le fin absolu du monde. Well, so what? La fin absolu du monde. Where, where'd you get the name? En français. Do you want to tell us? Uh, we, we got it off. Um, we got it off of uh, a horror movie, a John Carpenter short film uh, called Cigarette Burns. And within the movie, there was a little theater owner who was commissioned to look for a film called Le Fair Absolute du Monde. Um, and it was a film where uh, viewers would just go crazy, do some crazy things um, as they watched. And, um, and Jason had said, that's perfect. We are going to make music about the absolute end of the world. <laughs> and so that's what, that's what we do. La Faire Absolute Monde, the soundtrack for it. All right, well, <laughs> that's mayhem. I, or here, you have it. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, very good. I, uh, La Faire Absolute du Monde. Eh? We spell it wrong. Yeah, yeah. Is, it, is it Le Faire or La Faire? La, la Faire. But, it, but technically there's no T. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 L last night we were in uh, Chicago at a great place called Reggie's Joint. And it's one of those venues that has two venues in it, like a really big concert room and then like a smaller concert room. And we're not famous enough to be in the big concert room. <laughs> so we were in the smaller concert room. And when we, were, when we were getting the show, the person that booked us said, I have a date for you if you need one, but I think it's a horrible fit. I was like, what is it, Polka Night? Mm -hmm. She was close enough at Ska Night. Oh. Ah. 
And so we played on Sky Night, and we accidentally pulled into the big room when we were, we were trying to load in, and the big room was a death metal show. Oh, even better. <laughs> and the headliners were from France. Uh, so uh, and they had to correct you, didn't they? They actually, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, they're we, French. <laughs> we met them, and uh, and I was like, hey, we have a French name, and you're France. I don't know. What do you, what do you say to a weird <laughs> French death metal man? And, uh, <laughs> And, uh, and so I, I gave him the CD, and he immediately was like, oh, oh, no, 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 you see, you see. I was like, no, we, we spelled it wrong on purpose. He's like, hmm, do not do that. Like, uh, 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 that's French, man. Yeah, well, you know, then I won't. But I think they actually, uh, they finished there in, uh, sooner than we did, because their side was all ages. So they actually came over, watched the end of our set, and uh, asked us to do like one more song and <laughs> dug it and told us that if we ever want to come to France, we could stay with them. So that was kind of neat. No, that was kind of neat. You can respell your uh, name. Right? <laughs> in so far as you can do it in words, like what kind of music do you play? What are your instruments? Just give us a little idea. Um, it's uh, right now we're calling it experimental electronic music. I don't, I don't know. For us, it's just normal. But when other people hear it, they don't know what to say. Um, <sighs> so they compare it to port uh, um, a blend of Portishead and the Deftones. My favorite, my favorite uh, comparison uh, as of late was uh, if, if Portishead went out on a killing spree. <laughs> if you're familiar with, with Portishead. It's it's, um, Jason, for our live show, Jason plays um, plays guitar, and I sing, and we have backing checks that come out of a computer. Um, although I just sing, I am a, a classical instrumentalist, and so so we we pre-produce our kind of a a rich and full sounding backing track, and I don't know, we like it. So, if you guys at home want to come out. Yeah. Come hang out. So, so the live, the live show and the be entertained. And do you want to talk? No. no. Or shall I? No, go ahead. You gotta sing too. <laughs> She's got the microphone. She should talk. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, what was your classical instrument? Um, I went to school for classical piano okay. performance uh -huh. and with a minor in Spanish classical guitar. Really? Wow. Yeah, but I grew up playing um, all kinds of woodwinds and mm -hmm. and, and horns. Mm -hmm. So, but piano is my my main instrument. I like that classical guitar stuff. Oh, me too. I wanted so bad to be a gypsy king. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> I wanted so bad to be a gypsy king, yeah. I like this. Back next week. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in Omaha. <laughs> Isn't that nearby? Is this the, which side of Iowa is this? Is this the side that's near Omaha? No, no, you're, you're on the other side. That's the other side? Okay. Yeah, Omaha is uh, 156 miles. We're the side near Minnesota. No, you're by Illinois. So We're closer to Illinois, Illinois than anything. Illinois, okay. Nebraska's west. I need to see a map. Straight west of Carolina. <laughs> I'm like, do you know where Chicago is? See, you're 200 and uh, something, about 200 miles from uh, west of Chicago. If you go another 156 miles, it'll be in Omaha. You guys should have came to Chicago, show what happened. I'm sorry, I was busy, last, I was busy <laughs> were, last night. You were right there, it was a holiday. Yeah. I'm hurt. Have you played in Des Moines? Have we? I want to say Des Moines wouldn't have us. Yeah. Not, there's there's certain places that I guess we're not cool enough. Wyoming. Wyoming won't, won't have us. Yeah. Won't have us. Uh, I'll mention there's some place in Des Moines that would love to have us. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. I, I think one place in Des Moines actually was like, nah, I'm booked. <laughs> That was the most response I got back from Des Moines. There's Cup of Joe, I think, and that's they have all kinds of more uh, up and coming things. They wouldn't have me because I'm too uh, old and like sedate. Too good. <laughs> I went to school for You're classical too good. guitar. Yeah. <laughs> that's all that is. That's jealousy. Yeah, I don't know, man. That's what we say when our feelings are hurt and our ego is crushed. We just yeah. go, "It's jealousy." Yeah. Yeah. That's how it's done in my job. Then we go cry in the car. And yeah. Go to the next town. But yeah, Des Moines know. wouldn't have us, so we're like, F you, Des Moines, we're going to stay in Iowa City. <laughs> we like it here. Hey, we like, people anyway. have been nice to us. They let yeah. us play. So. Well, Iowa tends to be a little cooler than a lot of states about things, you know. They, uh, 
you know, people are like, you know, very few, uh, very, very, very little hatred and, and uh, stuff in this state. So. Mm, they pulled us over. We kind of got scared to drive here from last time we were here. Pulled you over? That's oh, yeah. right. Yeah, that's, that's right. a highway, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was a very uncomfortable pullover. Oh, really? Oh, boy. But, eh, uh, it's going to happen. We drive a lot. Yeah, yeah. Out of state plates. It's like a beacon to yeah. get messed with. Right California. Out of state plates will get you in trouble a lot. Yeah, yes. it's just they always think we have drugs in, in the car. And yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. know. Either that or you're easy, you won't fight the ticket. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I don't know what they asked for. Actually, I was in a passenger seat and they were asking for my ID first. I was like, oh, that's oh. that's interesting. <laughs> I was like, I wasn't uh. driving. He's like, I just want to know who's in the car. I was like, well, don't you want to know who the driver is? Because you didn't pull me over. Pull her over. But uh, it is what it is. It's uh, something we have to deal with when we decided to live this lifestyle and constantly be traveling that you know, you're going to run into not the greatest cops every time. Yeah, I guess. So it does make us leery. That's the only thing that actually does kind of weird us out about Iowa, is uh, is the police. Cause we got pulled over for doing three miles over the speed limit. Yeah. Yeah. Was it on interstate? Yeah. Yeah, interstate. Yeah, on eighty. Huh? Was it a state uh, cop or was it like? A yeah, just it was yeah. a few miles off, few miles. We were right outside of Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. I knew somebody who got pulled over because uh, there was like this pipeline of drugs going through Kansas, and she was pulled over in Kansas and. Uh, Spent a night in jail because her license had expired. But they had a grace period in California and a grace period in Iowa, and she was on her way between the two states. Oh. She, there, was, there was no grace period in Kansas, and then she spent the night in jail. Oh. But they said because it was like a major drug importing or like thing. And also, they profile people as. Uh, oh yeah, Arizona is a horrible state for that. Uh, you see people getting their car ripped open in Arizona, driving through all the time. We actually try to bypass. This state, and as in general, uh, the southern part of the country off of I-10 is because there is such heavy drug traffic uh, from Mexico. That's a really horrible place to to go through touring wise. But hmm. other than that, this is great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're up we're up north now. Everything's wonderful. <laughs> they actually didn't put you in jail, so that's no. you're, better, you're ahead of the game with some people. Anyway. No, they used to pull me over a lot when I used to play. I was, I was a mariachi with a Great. Mexican guy. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. oh, sorry. I gotta play the Tom's Guitar Show theme, and uh, so. Uh